Hello, and welcome to the Sundance Film Festival in Key West. My name is Terry George. I'm a board member of the Tropic Cinema. And today we have the world premiere of the Maltese film, Luzu. And I'm happy to talk to that film's director, Alex Camilleri. Uh, it's a real privilege to be with you, uh, especially under these circumstances. And so I owe you a deep thanks for keeping the screens open for us. Um, Lutsu is, is my first feature film, and it's also uh, one of the very first uh, Maltese films uh, really that's ever been made. And uh, I wanted to make films since I was very young. And also, as long as I can remember, I wanted to make those films in Malta. My parents emigrated from Malta to the United States in the late 1980s, and I was born shortly after. Uh, but all of our family uh, remained back in Malta and, and we tried to get back as often as we could and keep close ties to the island. So being both an insider and an outsider to Malta um, and in general, uh, that position is quite valuable as a storyteller and must be why I, I feel drawn to make films in my family's homeland. Um, I have both a great love and also great curiosity about, about the islands. And I think it's valuable, you know, when we don't always understand everything because we start asking questions and wondering why things are the way that they are. Mm -hmm. So um, in this film, uh, um, which is about uh, the world of traditional Maltese fishermen, uh, I had a lot of learning to do. The audience of Key West may be dismayed to learn that prior to this project, I had never gone fishing. I did not like being at sea and I did not even eat fish. Uh, so you might say that this is not the most natural subject matter, but I, my imagination is just forever, I've been gripped by this beautiful and eclipsing world of Malta's traditional fishermen. And when I began researching with the idea of, of making a film about this, uh, this amazing world, I started talking to fishermen and, and realized that uh, questions about family and fate and sacrifice things I wondered about in my own life weighed very heavily on fishermen. Uh, many of these men who are uh, on average, the average fisherman is uh, 50 years or older, uh, were grappling with the fact that they were the last generation and that their sons would be the first generation not to take over this really beautiful craft. I, at the same time, was wondering how I relate to my own family's history and what might be passed on to, uh, to future generations. But while talking, I realized that the fishermen were running in the opposite direction. They were not trying to hold on to the past. They were very clear eyed that this was the end. And there was an enormous amount of heartbreak behind what they're saying, but at the same time, they were very unsentimental. And that just seemed like such a, a ripe story that I could relate to on, on a deeper level. And understanding the inner world of these characters gave me the confidence to uh, pursue it and uh, I began researching and all I needed to do was uh, get a stronger stomach. Lutsu refers to the traditional Maltese fishing boats and they're instantly recognizable from their brilliant colors and also uh, their defining feature which is uh, the eyes of Osiris which are carved into the prows of the boat. So the shape and design of these boats is um, synonymous with with Malta um, they really typify the island in a way. Uh, and it's believed that they are traced back to the Phoenician um, empire who um, traded all around the Mediterranean, but were present in Malta, I think as early as 1000 BC. Mm. So yes, these boats are very much tied to the, the history and, and the character of, of Malta. Tell me Alex about your cast. I believe some of them never acted before. Yes, yeah, so um, from the very, earliest inklings I had about the story, I, I knew that I wanted to work with non-actor fishermen. I, I just felt the, um, the only way to tell the story would be with the real people. Um, and I tried to use non-actors as much as possible. So the two fishermen leads are real fishermen. Mm. Their names are Jess Mark and David, and they kind of play versions of themselves in the film. And um, I surrounded them in some other key roles with trained actors. Um, there's a tremendous amount of um, talented actors in Malta, um, though they don't really have uh, as much of a local cinema industry, which is why this is kind of amongst the first 
films of its kind. So we were um, doing something that uh, even trained actors were um, coming to with some kind of fresh, uh, with some freshness. And one of those, one of those trained actors is uh, our female lead is a brilliant young actress named Michaela Faruja. And uh, she's uh, quite young and she is uh, in here in her first film role, but um, I, I think she's just astounding and I hope people enjoy her performance in the film yeah. as much as uh, The Fisherman. Alex, can you tell us what it meant to be selected for Sundance? Well, it was, um, you know, extraordinary on a personal level, but when we were able to share the news um, with our friends and colleagues, uh, the news spread like wildfire uh, in Malta and was met with just a real outpouring of national news coverage and overwhelming enthusiasm. And uh, I, I felt a lot of pride that um, that the, the news was felt as a common accomplishment. So, I mean, uh, the, the Maltese are quite proud when they get noticed kind of outside of their own, um, their own part of the world. And it's given me a, re a affirmation about this film, but also a kind of a confidence that these um, very specific stories can travel. And uh, I'm so glad actually to be bringing it to um, at least geographically a, a similar kind of environment in, in Key West, because I, I think there's um, so much about being close to the sea that, that will resonate with, with our Key West audience. And, and, and I hope you appreciate that aspect. In my mind, Sunday, it's always meant being on the cutting edge. Uh, they're a discovery film festival and have discovered you know, so many great voices in, in cinema. And so uh, in a way we shouldn't be surprised that they're leading the charge in um, uh, keeping, keeping us engaged in finding new work even amid all of this um, misery that we're going through collectively. So uh, they've done a tremendous, uh, tremendously good amount of, um, they've done a tremendous amount of good for, for the filmmakers and are giving us a platform that I happen to think is um, advantageous to this film, but in general to, to the filmmakers who are part of this class, because um, you know, there's a certain amount of privilege of being able to travel to Park City and put yourself up and watch the films there. Not many people get to do that. And here we are, and we can share the film with new kinds of audiences all over the country at the same time. I think there's extraordinary value in that. New kinds of people will see this film and new, um, uh, new people will come to the table, and I can only see the, the plus side of that. This is a small independent film. Tell us, Alex, some of the challenges you faced in getting it made. You know, we were a crew of 20 maximum, like on our busy days, we had 20 people. So we had to keep it quite light. And um, on a first film, as a, as, a, as a young filmmaker, I think it's good to be able to not have, you know, too much of a machinery around you and I think it was just the right size to accomplish what we needed to do. The common, you know, the common knowledge is never shoot on water and, but you know, if you're telling a story about fishermen, you, inevitably you're gonna have to do it. Um, there's the famous book about the making of Jaws and everyone was telling me, oh, read about that book and, mm. and how terrible it was. <laughs> to, um, I was Spielberg shot and I said, no, I don't wanna read that book. The only thing I have going for me is, um, my, my innocence about this. We had some idea early on to try to shoot off the shore, but it, it proved getting the amount of clearance of um, making sure that the coastline wasn't in view was too difficult. So the best way was to do it as real as we could. We shot with uh, four boats. So we have got the, the picture boat, um, the Lutsu, where our character is. And then we have a support boat for the crew. And then you have a safety rig. And then you have like a second support boat that's helping with the fishing. So keeping all of those boats in coordination with each other and making sure they're out of the shot was one of the biggest challenges. And, uh, you know, the first couple of days were tough. I think we had four days total of shooting at sea and half of the crew and one of the actors and also myself became very seasick. Um, so I was uh, holding my uh, camera, my direct director's monitor up high so that I could um, vomit over the side of the boats and continue directing. Watching the footage back now, it's amazing to me that you can't tell that half of us were like had our heads over 
the railing and we're just puking our guts out. It, we in Key West are excited to have the world premiere of your film live to an audience and also virtually. So uh, Alex, thank you for this gift. And then the last thing I should, I should say is if you're gonna have a nice meal after this, maybe you'll have some um, Dorado or Mahi Mahi. <laughs> and you should know that those fish are seen in this film. They begin uh, their life's journey in the Mediterranean. Um, in Malta, they're called Lampuki. Yeah. They migrate across the Atlantic. You know, they start this big and then of course they become, by the time they reach the Gulf, they're, uh, they have a different name and they're much bigger, um, but we're connected through the fish. Indeed, Alex, we're connected by fish and by film. We really appreciate you taking the time. And now the world premiere of Loser. <laughs>